Uh, Father, we just want to bless you for the privilege again you've given to us mm -hmm. to be content among those that are alive mm -hmm. and not just existing, but those that are alive in Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the work of salvation you started in us, that you will complete unto the coming of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in this work that you are working in us, understanding matters, revelation matters, mm -hmm. that we are perceptions of your word matters. And that is why, again, we gathered. And to as many that we gathered in many years to come, to the audio to video of this message, that it will present our body, spirit, soul unto you. And we pray that you will break down every barrier that will hinder your word to connect into our soil. We declare, O oh God, that we are ready. We are willing and that you will make us able. That, Lord, you will give us understanding that will not just be an error. That you will give us perception that we will not just open our eyes and say, that, Lord, the Holy Spirit will bring a dual spirit in the inside of us. That it will bind every satanic manipulation. Mm -hmm. We come against every spirit of offense that will not allow the word of God to settle in us. Amen. We declare that your will and your word shall be established in our being today. Amen. Thank you, Father, for what you started and what you will complete. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I welcome you again to the presence of God in another teaching of the word of God on the fear of God. If I'm not mistaken, I believe today is part seven. Part 7, as I always say, a real church of God, a truth church of God, a church of God that is truthful, is a school, is a spiritual school where you go to learn, you get imparted, mm -hmm. and out of the impartation of what God is giving, we become an able believer, we become strong. Mm -hmm. The teacher in the church of God as a true church of God is no other person but the Holy Spirit that represents the Lord Jesus Christ in his church. So it does not matter where we gathered, because the Bible said the time is coming and the time is now that those that will worship the Father will not worship on this mountain, neither will they come to the temple, but they will worship in spirit and in truth. So location is in the dimension of the spirit and the truth, which is Christ, is available. And as we gathered, and as many will be watching or hearing this message in many years to come, prepare yourself because at that point you are in church. When you came right to his presence, we are in church. The Bible says, wherever two or three shall gather in my name, I will be there in their midst. So God is here with us. The Lord Jesus is here with us. The Holy Spirit is already in the inside of us. Prepare yourself as I always do and do say, Get your Bible ready. No student go to school without books. Serious students go to school with books. Get your Bible ready. Get a paper. Preferably get a notebook. Get a pen. Write these things down. The danger of church attendance is to go to school without taking notes. Your brain cannot carry everything God will deliver to you and the future ahead, you need them. People will become so confused with time. They will be asking, what is happening? Why this uncertainty in our world? Any believer that's still thinking that way is a believer that's not serious. From the day the Bible was written, God gave us understanding, revelation of the end time. He gave it to us because what you know will not overpower you. He gave it to us so that we can be prepared. He gave it to us so that when it begins to happen, we say, we are aware of that and Christ will win. But when you come to church, you don't write things down. How do you refresh yourself? How do you remind yourself? How do you come to an understanding that daddy spoke yesterday in school? And this is what he wants me to do. Read the word again to yourself. Take your note. The Bible says people are burying after they've listened to Paul. They will go back home. They will go and do more research to see whether what Paul said to them was actually the way it was. Those are people that truly want to make heaven. Heaven is not for everybody. I kept saying it, even though that is not the way God planned it. It is by choices. There are so many careless Christians that thought they would make heaven. They could be one of the five virgins that were not ready. But when the door is shut, they were still virgin. 
But the Bible says they do not have oil in their lantern and they cannot enter. May God prepare us rightly. May we be ready for the day of the final day we are walking towards in the name of the Lord Jesus. The fear of God. We have looked at many things on the fear of God dimension. We are going to look at part 6 today. Open your Bible with me if you can to the book of Exodus chapter 18 verse 21. What are the things that the fear of God will do for me? I wrote down, I say, it will bring promotion and elevation. The fear of God promotes. The fear of God elevates. And I read verse 21. <clears throat> More so, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating conventiousness, and place such over them, to the rules of thousands and the rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. I read that place again to us. Promotion does not come from the west, from the south, from the east, from the north. But the Bible says from God. So God is the only one that gives promotion. And in the land of Israel, <clears throat> when they came out of Egypt, there are needs for rulers, leaders. To assist and work along with Moses. Moses cannot just pick anybody and put them in place. God had to give Moses the criteria of those that are required to be leaders. And these are the requirements God gave. God himself promoted among the equals some people to lead with Moses. He said, moreover, Moses, thou shalt provide out of all these people able men. Able man, such as fear God. My understanding of that place is you cannot be an able man before God except and until you have the fear of God in the inside of you. So what makes us able is the fear of God. The fear of God creates ability. That is the key. Ability spiritually, ability emotionally, ability uh, physically, ability financially. If you truly want ability, what is ability? The grace to do things that others cannot do. Ability. He said, Hebrew men such as fear God. As a result of them fearing God, ability was created in them. And the Bible says, if you fear God, they are also known as men of truth. Men that can accommodate the truth. There are so many people that the truth is their enemy. You see? Everywhere I go to minister by the grace of God and the little opportunities God gives to me, I don't care about who is listening. I just want the Holy Spirit to speak because that word is not just for them, it's also for me. In the light of that word, I'm running my own race. When I go back home and go and listen, mommy can bear with me. When we finish service here, I will play that message again to myself. Where and where is God asking me to change? Look, I don't preach at anybody. If you still believe at this level, oh, that is preaching at me, you do not know the daddy God gave to you. God preached to me. I am the one God is talking to. I must make heaven. I cannot die and go to hell. Mm -mm. I couldn't be seen on the rapture day staying on earth. Why God has taken his people. Paul said something. He says, so that on the day when these people are entering, I will not be what? A cast out. It means God doesn't care about who and what I have done. If Moses did not enter the Kenyan shore because of his misbehavior and only grace make him to take heaven. God is no respecter of nobody. So please run your race as I run mine. These are no time for offenses. These are no time for offenses. And what they say, what I hear, it means you are going nowhere. This is not motor park journey anymore. We've left motor park a long time ago. There are times it will only be individual that will run this race. Oh. Mm. There was a day it was only Christ Jesus. The disciple disappeared, but he kept on moving. He kept on moving because he acquired more along the line. Mm. Please, I encourage everybody. I speak as the Holy Spirit speak to me. I don't live in anybody's home, but the Holy Spirit lives in everybody's heart. Walk your journey. Do your journey. The truth will never be watered down. As God give it to me, I will take it and I will deliver it. I am not the kind of person that use words anyhow. Because I know every word we utter, we will give a report on the last day. Heaven is encouraging everybody. Do your race. The Bible says we should remember Lord's wife. A person that gets halfway and begins to look back. And he never go forward, neither did he go backward. Lord's wife never entered destiny. Neither did he return back to the land of Sodom. He was halfway caught. Heaven is direct. Keep 
moving. Do your journey individually. I keep telling my family, I said, we met here. <laughs> Before I know these children, know my wife, I was all alone on my journey. And when I will leave, you will just be me. The day I will stand before God, it is going to be me. There is no family like that in heaven. We are all children of God when we get there. So run your own race. Do your own journey. The Bible spoke that people that fear God, they have ability. Not only that, they are men of truth. They are people of truth. They are men that can handle truth. What did Paul say? He said, a time is coming. He said, Timothy, preach the gospel. Preach the sound doctrine. He said, because the time is coming that people will not be able to endure the sound doctrine. How do you know men of truth? They can endure. It is about endurance. All the ones that follow Jesus. The word that, when I read everything Christ said when he was here, you must really be a person that can handle the truth for you to stay around Christ. No wonder 68 of them left in one day. They said, who can take, is it 58? Who can take this? And they departed. He now turned to the other 12. Are you two going? Most, Peter stood up and said, to who else shall we go? You are the one that have what? The word of life. The truth of God that we endure is as a result or is a symbol that we have the fear of God in the inside of us. Mm -hmm. It's not everything you tell your children that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Every correction you give, to, even the Bible says, it said, correction doesn't seem right right now. You know children, when I was growing up, parents correct me. I was a child. Every time I see them, I believe they are too mean. Ah, they don't care. See the way they give it to me. Now that I'm a parent and I'm correcting, I understand where my parents were coming from. That their heart is full of love. They could have ignored me. Oh, after all, there are many parents that only give back to children and they disappeared. Oh, there are children that doesn't know their mother. Talk less of knowing their dad. Ah, yes, and they have to be put in foster. Somebody gave back to them. But if my parents can still stand and be correcting me, it's a privilege I got. Is a privilege for my future. They don't have to do it. They don't have to do it. So if God is giving and God is releasing, take it because we are the privileged few. There are people that go to church today, so-called churches today, and the only thing they do is dance, 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 and they leave the church the way they came and their life never changed. And you know what? Those two will be telling you we are going to heaven. But you know, I know, if they die in that ignorant dimension, they are not making heaven. Heaven is not for ignorant believers. It is for people that the Holy Spirit has opened their understanding, that the Holy Spirit is working on on a day-to-day -day basis to become what God wants them to be. Those are the people that will make heaven. The Bible says many are called, but only few. And what shocked me there shall be chosen. So it's even heaven that we choose those that will make heaven. How do you choose? When you apply for a job, you write your CV, you submit your CV, you do your application, they do interview. They first of all water it down. They, they narrow it down by choosing people that will come for interview. The position is only one and they will call 50, 18 people, 30 people to come for one position of interview. And out of the 18, they are only going to choose one. It means it is not those that came for the interview that will decide I'm working in this company. It, the choice belongs to those that are interviewing them. Heaven will choose based on God's criteria. The advantage we have over many believers is by the Holy Spirit and the word of God that we are giving and the revelation and the understanding we are giving because many are hearing but they have no understanding. The Bible says for them it's been selected that they will hear but they will not understand. They will see but they will not perceive. He said but unto you it's been given to know and to hear to understand the secret things of the kingdom. So the kingdom things are secret. It's not open. Carrying the Bible will not reveal it to you because letter kill it. The Holy Spirit give it life. So the advantage we got is as the Holy Spirit dwell in us, we are being revealed. We have revelation of the things of the kingdom. And as we accept it and we allow the Holy Spirit to walk in us, we are being chosen by the day. A rich student that must pass that understand that school is beyond my staying for five years in this university. Four years in this university. School is where I prepare my future. School is where I get a certificate that will make me appointable in many years to come in a good job. Why some will get no job, somebody will get a good job. You came with first class. You don't need to worry yourself. As you're coming out, somebody's already looking for you because you have something of honor to present to them. You can add value to that company 
company compared to somebody that came out of a university with a pass or a fail. It's going to be a struggle. The same way we are all in a class, everyone is teaching us. And as we are being taught by the day, as we present ourselves in the criteria of God, not by our effort, but by the enabling grace of the Holy Spirit that dwell in us. You know what? We are already one of the choices of God. The Bible says they are people that men of truth. So a man, a pe- some people are seen by heaven as men of truth. Why some are seen by heaven as men of lies? Heaven sees some people as men of hypocrisy. Heaven sees some people as men of deception. Do you know devil was not created a liar? He adopted that spirit. And today they call him the father of all liars. A thief was not born a thief. They say, oh, that boy is a thief. Mm-mm, he was not born a thief. He has a name. But by virtue of what they do, people label them with that identity. And as a result, it becomes a new name for them. When we become a person that values truth, you run after truth. <laughs> the Lord began to tell me, he said, don't worry yourself. Keep ministry. A day we come. People that are looking for what I package in the inside of you, we celebrate you as if they have no other father they have ever seen before. But you keep teaching the world. Keep teaching the truth. Your people are coming. Are we men of truth? Are we women of truth? Are we children of truth? Are we family of truth? Those are the people that God say to have the fear of God. Am I a man of truth? Is truth finding me? Is truth find in the inside of me? Is truth radiating around me? And who is that truth? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And the advantage of that truth is it leads to life. He now said, men of truth, and you know them by this way, they hate conversiousness. They are not conversious. They are happy with what God gave to them. Struggle does not make it ends meet, you know. Oh, we are struggling. You will keep struggling and you will never stop struggling. Life is not based on your effort. Mm-mm. Life is not, oh, I must walk. I must do 9 to 5. I must walk. But remember, it's God feeding you. I have been in that journey, rat race, for many years. When my employer, who always call me, let's go to church together, who will tell me, Martins, I really appreciate your coming. The day he will fire me, he didn't even come to tell me. He sent a junior officer to tell me, you are among the 40% workforce that we are firing in our company. I now say, why is it that so-so person that we are so close cannot call me himself and tell me? He said, because he doesn't know how to look at your face. But since then till now, God fed me. He even fed me more than what I think I was acquiring for myself. It is God that brought you here. It is God that brought me here. Why we were in our mother's womb? Can you tell me how food enter into your mouth? How does your mommy's food come to supplement you for nine months? Only God knows how he does it. How do you come to the bath canal? You cannot tell. No child was awake during delivery. They have to slap bombs of children before voice start coming out. We, <laughs> the Bible says, when I went through the valley of the shadow of death, that is a shadow of death, a place of birth. When the doctor had to slap the bomb, turn the child upside down, slap the bomb to get a noise out. If that child refused to, when they say that child is dead and they will send him to graveyard. But God kept you. Now that he brought you out into the big womb, I always refer the earth is a bigger womb. Our mother's womb is the primary womb. So from one big small womb into a bigger womb, it must be God that must look after me. Make your efforts. Try your best. Don't stay idle. You cannot continue to pray and have faith without showing works. But at the end of the day, it is God that orders steps. It is God that brings it to pass. Promotion does not come from west, from south, from east. The Bible says, but from the Lord, I will look up to the hills. Where can I my help? All, not some. David was a man of wisdom. All of my help can I from the Lord. Who are you relying on? It's not by what we say. God does not look at our world to judge us. He look at our motive first. You can say everything to God in song. I can say everything to God in prayer. I can say everything to God in open places. God is looking at my motive. Motive is the intent of the heart. That man cannot see, but God is washing. He used the candlestick, which is your spirit and my spirit, to check our heart, to see the motive behind everything that we do.
The Bible says, these men that fear God, they hate conversiousness. Don't run in the track of your neighbor. Oh, my friend, do this. So too, I must do it. You are, you have become, you have become a shadow of the person you are running after their destiny. Whatever that person acquired, thank God for it. But be focused on what God called you to do. Hear me. What God called Joseph to do is different to what he called David to do. It's different to what he called Abraham to do. It's different to what he called Samuel to do. But they were all successful in their own ways. Your destiny differs to mine. But the same methodolica, the same direction, the same information, the same revelation from the word of God by the Holy Spirit is what God will dispense to all of us. But run your race. The Bible says run the race that was set before you. Your race set before you is different to the race set before me. Everybody Everybody must know God uniquely by themselves, for themselves. Then apply what the Holy Spirit is releasing to you and get to stardom. Hear me? Hating conversiousness. We were born the same year. And look at them. They've already acquired this. They've acquired that. Uh, they've, they've, they've built a uh, 21 story building. They've got houses everywhere. And but me, I am still on the same location. But the day they die suddenly at the age of 40, at the age of 50, Will you also pray for that destiny? Because it's still part of the timeline. Oh, it's part of the timeline. We only want to convert good things in the life of people. But you don't see their wilderness. There was a man of God. He's of late memory now in the United States. Every time he's preaching many years ago, I will go and name before the television. And I will place my hand on the TV. And I will be declaring, I want to be like this man. Lord, Lord, make me like this man. Lord, give me the anointing of this man one day. The Lord used my wife to correct me as I was about to kneel down and hold the television. My wife said, oh, nee, stop that. Don't do that. I was like, this woman has never talked to me like this before. My body shrank. So I stood there. I said, why? He said, you will never be another this person. You will never be another this person. You will not walk in somebody's shadow. You are going to be what God wants you to be. You are unique. Just wait for your time. Then he began to dawn on me. Conversiousness is working in the background. Even though it looks subtle, even though it looks as if I am thanking God for his life, but my wanting to be like him. Some people are talking like different ministers, behaving like different ministers. I pity you. I pity you. You are already becoming a duplicate when God wants you to be unique. Hear me? Joshua was not a duplicate of Moses. Joshua learned from Moses. He followed through with Moses. But when he came out and he was to lead the people, God appeared to him in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And he told him the kind of leadership he wanted from him that God did not got from Moses. He said, let me tell you your own uniqueness. This book of the law must not depart from you. In it, you must meditate. You remember? Moses had no book of the law because he was the writer of the book of the law. He stood before God for days, writing it. The first one he wrote, he brought down because of the behavior of the people. He break the tablets. God said, come up. I won't write it so that you don't break it. You wasted my time in writing. Now you begin to do the writing. See how easy the writing was. When he wrote, he brought down. He did not even follow what he was writing. God has said, Joshua, you must be different from Moses in this area. The book of the law, what book? The one that Moses left. You must read it. You must meditate. Uniqueness matters. And as I stood up from that place that day, that was the last day I ever prayed, Lord, make me like any man. Lord, make me like any No, that was the last day. I thank God for their life. Guess what happened? Not too many years later, scandal broke. It was a gay. It was doing days. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Before you know it, one thing led to the other. Some say he caught AIDS. A lot of information. We don't know whether it's cancer. He died. The last part of his life that I saw the play, I, start, I was crying in the inside. They were glorifying him like God. They put him on a chair. And they were lifting him up. And they were saying, he looked like God. I say, hey, the problem of error that made God destroy error came upon this man. And he just fits well. And mommy was telling me, do you still want to be like him? Is a timeline. The journey of everybody when King Saul started well. A lot of people want to be like King Saul. I wish it's my son that is the king of this land like Saul. I wish I will be a king like Saul. But the timeline came to a point where Saul had to be going to, 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 to sorcerer. Have to be going to witches. Will you still wish to be like that? Compromise in left, right and center? And the ending of Saul was not what anybody wanted. Let God bring forth what he said he will do in your life. Stop converting others. Some people buy cars that they don't need. 
Some people buy cars they don't need. They buy some. Look into your house. Some things you have in your house, you really need them. Or you are doing it because you want to impress some friends. You want to, oh Lord, I want them to know I arrived and to pay the debt become a problem. There are some burdens we are carrying that we don't need. God has not given it to us. If it's not yet your time, stay where God place you. I thank God for those that are getting 5,000, 10,000 members. If God has not given that to me, it's less burden for me. Oh, church is not an easy place to run because you are carrying burdens. People will insult you. People will disrespect you. People will talk to you anyhow. They see you as nobody. Excuse me. But the Holy Spirit will say, just understand what is going on here. There are revelations the Holy Spirit will bring sometimes about people, of what they think of you, what they say of you behind it. It breaks your heart as a prophet. But God said, don't say a word. I just want you to know what is going on in this cycle so that you can use wisdom. Excuse me, what about if you have 10,000 members, 20,000 members? If you have not grown to handle those responsibilities, it is that that killed some minister. You just hear some minister died. What killed them is the stress of the church. One of the very first things my father told me in ministry, he said, Olumide, I said, sir, he said, remember, church is like you are like a, you are like an orange in the end of some members. He said, they will squeeze you, squeeze you, get the best out of you. When they have nothing left in it, they throw it away. Man of God, woman of God, let God take you on the journey. Don't be in a rush to become anything. Life is not where we come to display who we are. It is where we come to fulfill the mission he has set before us. Christ said, I am here to do thy will, O Lord. Are we doing God's will? Are we doing our own will? I am not desperate to be wealthy. In a small God, give me my food in my own timing. He give me accommodation. He give me roof over my head. That is more than enough. Whatever extra is given to me is to do a work for him. And then he will tell me what to do with the wealth when the wealth comes. Oh, that's the way to live life peaceably without any issue. The Bible says they hate conversiousness. Do you love conversiousness? Don't use your word to answer. Let your motive, let your actions, let our behavior be the one answering for us. Because you know a person not only by their word, but by their behavior. Do I love conversiousness? Do I like to acquire things only because I see others acquiring it? Am I happy when God comes to my neighborhood and visits my neighbor without stopping in my house? How do I feel when I look back and I look at others that have gone ahead of me doing great things? Do I feel as if, God, you've done nothing? There is nobody God has not done something for. The reason why you always believe that yours is not enough is because you are equating yourself with somebody else. But you, your, your destiny is different. Your timing is unique. What God has promised, he will complete. I was listening to a man yesterday and he said something. He said, remember the ark of Noah. He said, the ark of Noah, every animal you see that existed today, he said, in twos, in pairs, they all enter the ark. I said, that's true. That's what the Bible told us. Whatever you see today, God did not do a new creation. It was two, two of every animals, every balls that God brought into, including fishes. How he moved fishes into the ark, only he knows. He now says something. He said, if God can wait for snails, the pair of snails to enter into the ark. Do you know how long it took the snails to come from the forest to climb the ark and to enter into Noah's ark before God closed the ark? He said, if God can wait for the snails, the snails, the crawling snails to enter the ark, he will wait to bless you according to his promises if you keep coming. One thing the snail never did, it did never stop. You see, when the instruction came by God, whichever way God spoke to all the animals, because he created them, there's no animal that doesn't hear his voice. The donkey have told us, Balaam donkey told us, don't you hear? Don't you see what I saw? That was God. God speaks to every animal because any creation of God hear God's voices, including the plants, including the tree. Hear me very well. If God, when he spoke to a snail, those two snails, male and female snail, that enter the ark of Noah, keep walking towards this direction. The snail could have said, I am tired of walking. I don't think I can make it. When he saw every other animal rushing and running, I said, look, I can never get there on time before the ark shut and go. The, the snails kept coming and God waited. God was patient enough until the snails enter. If you keep in God's will, 
If I keep in God's way, if I do not compromise, if the fear of God is in the center of me and I meant it, God will bring to pass. He will wait to deliver everything he promised to do in your life and my life. And so shall it be in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says those that hated, they hated. Hear this. He said uh, they hated. Glory to God. He said they are the one that hated uh, conversiousness. And uh, he now said as a result of people that have the fear of God. And these are the characteristics you will see in them. That will make you know they have the fear of God. They are people that God has equipped with abilities. They are men first. They have abilities. As a result of the fear of God in them. They are men of truth. They do not like conversiousness. Because God knows if you put conversious people in position. They will still convert others. They will say, eh, eh, look at Aaron. See what you gave Aaron. Eh, look at Andrew. Look at Philip. Eh, I know I am li- living 10. Why can't I lead 50? Why can't... Mm-mm. They are satisfied with what God called their Lord at that point in time. And they will put their... Be- if you are conversion, you will never do God's work. Because rather than devoting your time to see God elevated, devoting your time to support the work of God, devoting your time to support the man of God, the woman of God, what you will be doing is creating offense. You will be, lo- and, and, you, hey, you will be looking for reason to create offense. And they give me 50 to lead. Why don't give me 100? And the one they give 200 to lead. Hear what the Bible says. It said, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands. And some to be rulers of hundreds, and another to be rulers of fifty, and another to be rulers of ten. If you manage to get one person that does not embrace the truth, somebody that has no ability in the first place, somebody that does not hate conversiousness, and they make him to oversee ten, and he saw somebody being made to oversee a thousand, what do you think will happen? Conversiousness will start. And it will lead to offense. And they will be looking for how they are going to drop that person. Before you know it, they will be complaining about that person. Whether rightly or wrongly, they will, they will be going to the boss. I uh, 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 say, Joshua, do, do you know this person? He's not doing it right. They will be composing stories. Before you know it, there will be babiting. Because it's all rooted in conversiousness. The Bible says, make them lure. I said, the fear of God is what promotes the fear of God. After walking in the inside of a believer, we bring promotion, we bring elevation. If I ask a question now, who knows tomorrow? I don't think there's anybody on earth that can raise their hand up. No government on earth can tell us what tomorrow owns. That's why I'm not bothered about Agenda 21, Agenda 31, Agenda 51, Agenda 71, Agenda 800. We are all human. We have one breath. They say some people have nine lives. Nobody have nine lives. When God pull your life out, we lower you into the grave. Your time is gone. The rest move on. Nobody can determine tomorrow, but God can. And it's not just about to determine tomorrow. He has written everything before we were all born into this world. Everything has been written, settled, and everything. That is why he can boldly say all things will work together for your good to those that love God and were called according to his purpose. For him to say all all things means he knows the ending from the beginning. He's not monitoring the ending. He programmed the ending. That is why he can tell you, this is the vision I have for your life. And 25 years later, it come to pass when you are in the will of God. He told Joseph that one day, your parents, your siblings will be bowing before you. Excuse me, it only happened about 13, 14 years after. He told David, you are going to be the king over the whole Israel. It happened about 17, 19 years later. He told Abraham, I am going to so bless you. It happened 25 years later. He then told him, 400 years from now, your children will be a slave. They will be, they will be abused by some sect of people. But I will raise a deliverer for them. Who is that? Moses. He was speaking of 400 plus years to Abraham about a, a, a great, 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 grandchild called Moses that he's going to use to bring them out with a mighty hand. It shows that God knows the ending from the beginning. And so therefore, why are we not secured with the one that knows the ending from the beginning? Why are we worried about the processes in our journey? Because we are looking at time. We kept telling ourselves, I'm growing older. Time means nothing to God. 
He said, is there anything too difficult for God to do if he can enter time to change the body clock of Abraham and Sarah to bring forth a new generation of a newborn baby without doctor coming to assist Sarah at 99 to deliver a baby. That is the God we are talking of. Our problem is we are ignorance of his ability. We limit his potentials. We bring him to the level of mere man because of the spectacle of conversiousness that we wear. Do away with conversiousness and say God as God. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. First Peter chapter 5. I want to read verses 6 to 7. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 and 7. And I read, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. We said to everyone that has the fear of God in them, God promotes them. Another dimension of the fear of God is humility. Not humility under your employer. Not humility under any other person. Humility that is under the mighty hand of God. Hear me? Don't touch a man, a woman that God has humbled of the day of humble beginning, either personally as an individual or in leadership or in ministry. So far, they are under the mighty hand of God. Don't mess around them. Don't look at their calling as inferior. Don't be too familiar with them because that God's mighty hand over them can also defend them. Continue to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. The Bible says there is an appointed time for an exhortation. I read that verse again. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Nobody knows the due time. I don't know my due time. I don't know the due time of this calling of this ministry. And I am comfortable with that. I don't know the due time of everything God promised me. And I am comfortable with that. Why? Because I know the one that promised. It's not a man that he will lie or a son of man that he will go back on his word. The Bible says he that started a good work in us is able to complete it even unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in a generation where humility is gone. And at best what it places is what we call false humility. Humility that we see today is hypocritical humility. Humility that people do because of what they can gain from you. They humble themselves when they want something from God. They humble themselves because of his motive. No, the Bible did not say there is a condition to our humility. He said humble yourself. Job was an example of humility. He humbled himself. He said, though he slain me, yet I will praise him. David was an example Example of humility. Every place is God allowed David to be in the journey of his destiny of pain. He never looked at God and insult God once. Hear me. He said, He said, Why are you downcasted, O oh my soul, within me? You will yet praise God. That is an humble person. Even though there was oil upon his head, he saw opportunity to kill Saul inside a, a, a what they call it, a, a, inside the, the, the rock where Paul, where Saul was hiding. Even his soldiers that surrounded him, they gave him an ill advice. Why don't you kill this guy? Once you kill him, everybody will look for you. Don't worry about it. Just terminate his life and take over. Take over his ministry. Take over his calling. Guess what a humble man said? A man that's waiting for God's timing. He said, I will not lay my hand on the anointed servant of God. He discovered that this is an anointed servant of God. Even though when the Bible says an evil spirit was upon Saul. How do you treat your ministers? How do you honor them? Hear me very well. A, a, an anointing you do not honor cannot bless you. Hear me very well anywhere in the world. David could have taken over, speedy it up. After all, he too has the oil of kinship that Saul had. There were two kings in town at that point in time. In the realm of the spirit, Saul was the fading king. David was the rising king. He's been settled. Even God had to tell Samuel, why are you still worrying yourself? Yourself about Saul. I have rejected him. I have created another king. What is God saying? 
The old heaven has known the new king, even though the old one sits to be sitting on the throne. This new one is what heaven recognizes. You know what it means when an election is done in any country? And in that country, the old government said, we are not quitting. We're not quitting. We're not quitting. But a new person has been elected. And the new person that was elected was seen to be fiery and fear by every other nation in the world. What will happen? Nations will begin to recognize the new kingdom. We recognize you as king. We recognize in, 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 in coming is now the new government. The old one is going out. Hear me? They are supposed to be a transfer of power. But Saul said, I am going nowhere. He knew God has rejected him because Samuel told him to his face. Not once, not twice. Your kingdom has been torn away from you and he has been given to your neighbor. Still said, I will kill that neighbor and I will retain the kingship. That is why he was pursuing David. David now have the opportunity to retaliate, to make the journey quicker, to get to the throne earlier. But hear what David said. I will not lay my hand on the anointed servant of God. One of the things that David recognizes, if I kill Saul, somebody too will kill me. Whatever you do will return. Is a law of karma. Humble people do not take advantage of others. You will not remove a manager because you want to become the manager. <laughs> you will not destroy a life because you want to ascend their throne. If God has written it for you, you will get there this time. David recognized that. David stood on that principle. David taught others to stand on that principle. And one more thing that David did is in verse 7 of the book of First Peter chapter 6. He was casting all his cares upon him, upon God, because God cared for him. What is the point of rushing to be a king when God has not introduced you to the people? The daily needs will be met. So David said, tomorrow we take care of yourself. Do you know that's the principle I'm using? God is looking after me now. If he promised to bring billions tomorrow for his gospel, I am not going to rush to make it happen. Because he that said he's going to give it to me, know what he wants it for. And if it is to glorify his name, he will not stop giving. Why is still working on my humility dimension? God is taking you through humble journey. Hear what he told the Israelite. He said, do you know the reason why I allow you to go through wilderness? A journey that could have been 40 days or 10 days. You went through it for 40 years. He said, because I was testing your heart. I want to humble you. Humility is the key to greatness. Humility first to God. Humility to the Holy Spirit. Humility to the Lord Jesus Christ. Humble yourself also to those that God placed as leaders, washers over you. First in the church, children at home, humble yourself under your parents. You were not just here by accident. Don't stop. Don't suddenly become a tree that start, that start growing absentia. I'm just here. No, you were not just here. Somebody can tell your story before you were born. Those that can tell your story are those to be respected because they know what you don't know. Oh, you are just in an employment and you have been promoted. No, there are people you met there. They might not even have a higher position than you. Be humble. Oh, I am just a member of a church and now I am this. I'm not. No, there are leaders in the dimension of the spirit. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 7 and verse 17 in particular, it said they washes over your soul and they must give an account in the realm of the spirit over your soul. Don't let them do it angrily. Don't don't let them do it with a sorrowful mind. There are people in church when you are praying about them to God. You are so happy. Lord, I thank you for the life of this person. I thank you for what they are. Because why? They are making you happy. They make your Christian journey more easy. And it's sad to say in every church is, there are also people that they are pain in the heart of the pastor. Don't be that way. There are pains. Some children turn themselves pain in the heart of parents. Don't be that way. Some people turn themselves pain in the organization they are working. They can they, 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 the company can wait to sack them. If there is opportunity to let them go without breaking law, they will be the first on the door. Sometimes they themselves know that this is who I am. I'm not working right. Get it right. Whoever is hearing my voice in the nation of the world today, this is a heart of God. This is humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Life is vanity without humility. 
Life is vanity without God, Holy Spirit induce humility. Because when you chase life, life run away from you. But when you humble yourself in the same spot, in the same location where under the mighty hand of God, every other thing shall be added unto you. That was the understanding that the man called David had. That was the understanding that the man called Joseph had. That was the understanding that the man called Abraham had. That was the understanding that the man called Daniel had. The time is not there. I can keep mentioning names of several with that understanding that life must be lived in humility. Not a false one. Not self-induced one. Not a damnic humility. But the one that the Holy Spirit produced in the inside of us. And it must be I humbled myself under the mighty hand not of man but of God. And he said in his due season, eh, God, not man, will lift me up. How time flies. Let's take one more if time permits. If you have the fear of God, you become God's confident that he, he entrusted with you his secrets. Example is the man called Samuel. God gave Samuel his secret. Read your Bible with me if you can to Psalm 25, verse 14. Glory to God. Psalm 25, verse 14. 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 The secret of the Lord is with them. That what? That fear him. How much, how many of God's secret do you have? Hear what the Bible call it. Secret. In every home, there are children that parents keep secret with. They will say, just keep that money for me. When I need it, I will call it back. Come, 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 come. This is where I put the provision. I don't want everybody to know because they will finish it. I know the other one. Before five days, this thing will finish. But you, when I'm not at home, I will call you to just bring one out when, so that everybody can have. The secret things of God. He said, he's not hiding it with pastor because they have title. Mm -mm. He's not hiding it with apostle because they carry title. Mm -mm. He's not hiding it with prophet because they carry title. Mm -mm. He's not carrying it with teachers. He's not carrying it with evangelists. He's, call yourself the most holy bishop. God said, my secret is not with you because of that title or the office you choose to occupy. It is with anyone that fear God. So a little child can carry the secret of God. Oh, yes. That is why he came to the temple to speak about uh, what we call national emergency. National confidence with a little boy called Samuel. He bypassed Eli. Eli was the president in the land at that time. God said, I am not going to tell you anything I want to do. He did not tell the two sons of Eli. Those were the vice presidents in those days. He said, no, I am coming to the temple to speak to a little boy, a small boy of under five. And God gave him the confidential information of the disaster that is looming upon a country. Hear me very well. The secret things of the Lord, number one, they are things of the Lord. Number two, they are things that God treasured and they are so confidential with God. They are secret. And God said, I am giving it to only those that fear me. Do you fear God? Do you fear God? If you fear God, he will treasure it with you. People want to run to a prophet these days. Prophet, what is God saying? No. If you fear God, you will know what God is saying. If I fear God, I will know what God is saying. This is not to demoralize or make less important the, the ministry of the fivefold. No. God said, I am not just giving the privilege for, for, my, for my secret things to be divulged only to fivefold ministry. Neither am I giving it the privilege to the administrative offices because there are fivefold ministry which are apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Those are the fivefold ministry. They complement one another. None is bigger than the other because in the realm of the spirit, there's no age. 
There is no higher dimension. Only Christ is here. Then to support those five offices, an administrative position, some of which because of secularism that have entered the church, we now prefer them. We make them look more important even than the fivefold ministry that the master himself gave. What an error. What a deception. I am not putting anybody down, but hear me very well. A bishop is not higher than an evangelist in the realm of the spirit. A bishop is a byproduct of an apostle of his creation. Apostle Paul created the first bishop. So they were administrative, just like a deacon and elder are ministers. Those were their assignment for the edification. They were to administer so that the church can move. Titus and Timothy were made bishops. It doesn't make them lesser ministers. They were there for an assignment. But in spite of all these five folds, in spite of the supporting administrative offices, hear it very well. God's secret is not with them because of the office they occupy. It it is with anybody that has the fear of God. So it's more important to run to carry the fear of God than it's more important to be called a pastor, an apostle, a teacher, a deacon, a minister, a bishop, a archbishop, a ak 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 apostle. Mm-mm. Become a person that has the fear of God. God lay more emphasis on being a person with the fear of God in the inside. God will keep a secret with you. Do you know the secret things of God was kept with Abraham? Not because he was a friend of God. God gave him a secret purposefully because Abraham has a fear of God. He said, how can I do this kind of great thing in Sodom and Gomorrah without first sharing it with my friend? To everyone that keep God's secret, God see you as friends, not as slaves, not as servants. Jesus said, you are no longer what? My servant. I can no longer call you servant. I now call you what? A friend. Because a servant does not know what? What his master doeth. To know what the master doeth means the secret of the master is in your hand. When you begin to keep God's secret as a result of fearing God, hear me, and God begin to treasure his secret with you. When others are panicking in 2022, you will be smiling. They say, why are you so settled? Why are you not roughing? Don't you hear what our scientists are saying? Don't you hear what our government has saying? You say, I know the ending from the beginning because God came yesterday and he kept his secret with me. And God will bring that secret in different ways. He will bring it from his word. He will bring it through the Holy Spirit. He will bring it by himself. There are different ways God can release a secret to you. And as you begin to receive the secret, you will have the understanding of the secret. You will understand fully. You will perceive the secret. When Christ was here, do you know Christ was not living any ignorance? He knows where he came from. He knows what he came here to do. He knows his timing. He knows his journey. Every time he will say, allow it so, so that what has been written can be established. How did he know what was written? That John did not know. He came for John for baptism. He told John, baptize me. John said, no, God told me you are Christ. I cannot baptize. It should be the other way. I say, allow it so. So that what has been written can be established. So he knew what was written in the heavenlies. When God began to keep his secret with you, as a result of fearing God, fear we go. The fear of man we go. The fear of death we go. The fear of panic we go. The fear of issue in my marriage, we go. The fear of debt, we go. The fear of lack, we go. You will fear no evil. You will walk in perfect health. Anything you lay your hand on will be successful because you know the ending as God has shown you. And should in case sometimes it fails, the Bible says even if the righteous fails seven times, you know you will rise again and you will not panic. That's what Joseph knew. And the Bible says, and God was with Joseph. What do you think God was doing with Joseph? He was keeping his secret with him. He was giving him his secret. He was giving him secret. The secret of God of the next level. Of what God is about to acquire. Before he does it, he will show you. He said, behold, I am doing a new thing. Will you not see it? He said, forget the old thing. Because the old thing will hinder you of seeing the new thing. And God was keeping secret with David. God was keeping secret with Abraham. That is why they can go that longer time. Waiting on God in humility. God kept his secret for 140 years with the man called Noah. Keep building the ark. When the secret of God is with you, you become the treasure in the land. You speak on behalf of God. You reveal things that others do not know. And what do you do with the secret of God? You treasure it. 
What do you do with the secret of God? You treasure it and reveal it to your children. Children, he said, the secret things belong to the Lord, but the one he gave to us is for our children, for us and our children. Children, that is what the Lord is using me to do right now, bringing his secret out to those that will be able to accommodate it, to those that are not heavenly conscious. This is like wasted time for them. This is like don't waste my time. This is an offense to them. But to those that are going to heaven, that truly be belong to God, that have the heart of Christ. They are embracing this message all over the world and they are saying, you know what? God has spoken to me today. I stop at this point because time is going. Do we have a fear of God in abundance? Is a question everyone is asking me and you today. Nobody is exempted. As I always say, the hearer is order. The word that is being revealed, just like the, the speaker, is also under the word of God that is coming live. I pray that this word of God will bless us. We create a new dimension of grace in us. We give us the doer spirit. We make us to be released totally, open to the Holy Spirit, to complete that work that Christ has started on the cross in the inside and in our environment. To God be the glory today on this topic. If Christ tarries next week, we will continue on the teaching of the fear of God in another dimension. And I pray that this week will be an exemplary life. You will not just hear this word. I will not just hear this word, but we will return with the Holy Spirit into the workshop and we will release ourselves fully for him to walk out from the inside. The fear of the Lord. Let us pray. And Father, we bless you for what you've done, for what you are doing, for what you're about to do. I pray, oh God, that all of us, including me, Daddy, your fear will be settled in the inside of us. You will build a new man, a true man, a person you can be proud of, and you can call a friend, and you can keep your secret with. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. I believe God has blessed you and I today. And I encourage you to go over this message as many times as you can until it become a rema in your spirit and in my spirit. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Thank you for being part and taking your time to listen to this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us understanding of it and we bring a dual spirit in the inside of us. My names are Dr. Martin Batire. By the grace of God, I'm an apostle and a prophet of the living God, the general overseer by grace of Christ Miracle Evangelical Ministry, uh, also known as Christ Shalom Bible Center in the United Kingdom. Uh, I would love to hear from you uh, to see how these words of God is imparting your life. So write to us. Uh, our email address is available, um, info at csbci.org.uk. Info at csbci.org.uk. You can also visit us on our website, which is w www.csbci.org.uk I repeat www.csbci.org.uk May the Lord bless you. Should in case you have a prayer point, contact us as well. And we can agree together. Our God is still a faithful God. Uh, I encourage you, don't cultivate the habits of many. Staying in their home and said, I will never be part of a church. And don't just pick a church by choice or by sight. Oh, I want to attend that church because the building is big. I want to attend that church because it is very cozy. I want to attend that church because I like the way the pastor dress. Oh, I want to attend that church because their choir is magnificent. That is not the reasons that is good enough to select a church. What you need to do as a believer is for you to say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Where is that church you want me to grow? And God will lead you. He told Jacob, return to Bethel where I first met you. 
That was definite information and instruction. God will give you a revelation of where he wants you to be. And when you get there, don't just become a member, an idle member. Make sure you lay your hands on something you can do for God. Be involved, really involved. Not only that, take your time to make sure that every word of God that they speak is coming to you and you are making use of it. Should in case you are nearby any of our branches, either in Nigeria or in the United Kingdom, and the Lord is leading you to be part of us, we accept you with an open hand. Reach out to us and more information will be given to you. May the Lord bless you. May the grace of God continue to multiply unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Till next week, if Christ tarries, when we shall be going over again in this teaching of the fear of God, I commit you into the abundant power of the Lord Jesus. Shalom, shalom.